be here with Jill. Jill is Yay. the founder of Mom Squad. You guys all know here, if you're in here, there's just a few of you that might know. And, um, for those of you who don't, Jill, I'd love for you to share more about yourself. Yeah, so um, I started Mom Squad YYC about two and a half years ago. So I had just moved back with my husband from Ontario and um, we were, I was still finishing up my degree. We had no idea like what we were doing, where our life was going. Um, so yeah, I was in school and I was pregnant and I was like just very confused and overwhelmed. So I was like, well, why not make a Instagram account about it and see if I can create some community and get some connections and figure out like how to be a mom basically. Yeah. And, like, how to do mom things and stuff. So um, the community's grown a lot in the last two and a half years, and it's been really cool to connect and moms. And um, I made most of my really been such a huge blessing. So, yeah, it's good. I anything that is geared towards helping moms just navigate, especially the first few years. I'm just all for it. So yeah, super happy to connect and super excited for this group. So it's good. Me too. Absolutely. And I love what you are doing because I think, again, we we're just talking about this before the call and how important it is for us to connect and we need each other. And that is not a bad thing. And this is not like a codependent need. This is like emotional connections. This is even resources. It's like, hey, I have this Friday afternoon, mm -hmm. like send your kids over. You know what I mean? It's just, and I think yeah. we're going to be coming back to that even more. Um, so mm -hmm. I love what you're doing. I'm super excited to be connected with you. And I'll just share a little bit about myself and really um, some yeah. of the content that we're going to be diving into. So mm -hmm. I'm Celine Bilgin. I am a holistic nutritionist and I specialize with women's hormones and weight release and mindset because those are all the things and more that I had struggled with. Like I am not one of those people that was just born healthy. Actually, speaking of born healthy, I had jaundice when I was born and literally everything oh. from eating disorders to yo-yo dieting to having my cycle four times in a month to uh, like anxiety, literally insomnia all of it like and now I get that that was a gift in my life to be able to serve women but at the time it was not fun obviously and so I really look at the whole mind body picture when I'm working with someone when I'm doing a talk like this and so and really I just want women to realize how powerful they are and we are and really the more that we acknowledge our own light the more we're able to be better moms wives accountants entrepreneurs whatever whatever you're given your your chosen path it's like we can't be that best version if we're experiencing like all these symptoms and we're self-conscious of our bodies and i have been there and i just i exist my business exists to show women that it doesn't have to be that way so I'm excited for the opportunity to connect. And Jill and I were going back and forth for a while talking about what are some of your needs? How can we serve? And so um, I broke a lot of things down into some categories. And if you are on here and you think of a question, please let Jill and I know. Um, and Jill, I'll like pause when I'm talking about it. So I would, you know, you are, I don't have kids yet. You are the expert on this. And um <laughs> You know, and it's funny, every, if I ever say that to mom, it's like, no, no, I don't actually know what I'm doing. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you have to my page because I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> Seriously, I don't know if we ever fully, fully know, too, especially no, I'm sure you are a mother. Um, but yeah, so I will, I'm going to go into some basics of really caring for our bodies during this time because it is stressful for everyone involved and moms have it the most, right? Because all of a sudden your kids are home, whether you have one kid or five kids, right? And so oh, everyone's man. at home, husband's at home, you're probably working from home. And if you're not, you're still like managing yourself and other people. And so the most important thing that I want to start with is mindset. You know, I'm sure we've all heard of affirmations and Jill and I were just talking right before is like, you don't have to sit in front of the mirror and be like, I am awesome, like whatever. Actually, and if you want to do that, that's beautiful too, right? And the, and the thing is, it's just having this like switch in your mind, very conscious. 
because we're so automatic, right? You drive somewhere and you're like, how the heck did I get to this spot? Because even that, we're tying your shoes, brushing your teeth. These are automatic. And so our thoughts that serve us also must be cultivated. Just as your parents taught you to brush your teeth before you go to bed at night, you must also train your mind to think in a way that serves you. Because, I'm sure you figured this out, our brains are like not really great at making us feel good all the time. And they are designed for our survival, right? And so we will pick at ourselves in order to survive and, and avoid threat. And most of all, avoid threat from external. If we can if we can do the threat ourselves to ourselves, that's you know, that's like that's how we kind of like, oh like, yeah, you're not that good anywhere. Who would want to hear from you? Or you're not that good of a mother, or whatever, you're failing as a mother, like whatever thoughts that we might have. So hmm. I invite you to, if you're on this call, whether you do it now, you do it later, to think of oh, whether it's a mantra or a phrase you can tell yourself when you wake up in the morning, when things get frustrating, even if it's like, I can do this. Like, and you don't have to ignore reality. You can be like, I'm stressed out. I have no idea what next week is going to be like. I don't know what my day is going to look like, but I got this. I can do this. It's just that, it's just that flip. It's very, very subtle. And so when you catch yourself thinking like, this is too much, how am I going to do it? Like, my life is a mess. Like, whatever you're selling, telling yourself, it's like, okay, my life might feel like a mess right now. It might feel overwhelming right now. And here is my turning point. Here is where I make the switch. And uh, Jill, what do you like? What are your thoughts on that? Have you ever had thoughts about like, oh, I'm like, yeah. I think that's all super important. Um, so, yeah, I took psych in university, and a hmm. lot of what we talked about. Um, I did a brain and behavior class, and I had no idea it was like so much like biochemistry, and like I did not take science in high school, so I was just like. But what I did get out of it that was applicable and that I understood was that like your brain is made of pathways. So the more that like a message travels on a pathway, the stronger it is. So if you're telling yourself like, I'm weak, I can't do this, like all the negative thoughts that like circle through our heads all the time, that pathway is going to get stronger. But if mm. you train yourself to say like, no, I am strong. I got this. I'm confident. Like I'm able then it's going to feel weird for a long time because you're building a new pathway. But the more you do it, the stronger that pathway gets. And I can definitely like see it in my own life and in so many people's lives around me where it's just like, yeah, like retraining yourself to think well of yourself sort of thing. So yeah, I definitely agree. Oh, that's beautiful. And it's, it's so true. It literally like it is, yeah, it just it's a pathway in the brain. Just like as we're learning a new instrument or new language, we're creating those new pathways. And honestly, like sometimes I find it awkward to change my mind about something. Like yeah. I'm like, you know what I mean? I'm like, this feels so like there's so much resistance to thinking positively sometimes about a situation. Yeah. We're like, no, there's nothing you would like, or even about ourselves. Mm -hmm. So it's it's like it's literally creating this new, it's just like learning a new you know, a uh, song on a guitar, it's like, it feels awkward at first. And so this mm -hmm. is another thing. And this is the key piece of what we're like, I really want to share about too. And so um, that's really the fundamental. So I'm just mm -hmm. looking over my notes here. And so really going from mindset is like waking up and even the night before I do not go to bed without planning out my day the night before or the mm -hmm. night before. Think about like, how do you want your day to look like? How do you want to feel at the end of the day? And I'm sure a lot of us want to feel proud and confident and accomplished. And and you know what? I think there's a lot of pressure to either do all the courses that we were meant to do, like in this time, yeah. or like, you know, and spend it wisely. Like I I'm on that train, but then there's also that pressure we put on ourselves. It's like, you know what, if you feel like being in your pajamas for half the day and just chilling, like make that productive for yourself too. like make it something that you mm -hmm. actually enjoy so and if you and like plan that into your day just as you are meeting with like a doctor's appointment or you're having your hair done whatever it is you schedule that into your calendar and this is a thing too mm -hmm. like scheduling in the things that make you feel good whether it is movement yeah. I, I have an account like i literally have a little post-it on my um on my plant here on my desk and last week I set all these like major goals that just like I normally do and then I didn't get most of them done 
and I felt bad about it. And I said, you know what? Like my head is also full. Gym is not open. Like I'm going to set myself wins, like things I can easily learn. Here I have like, this is my, me personally, where exercise is very important, but 20 minutes minimum of exercise is sweating beyond my 20 minutes of yoga and half an hour walk. Like that to me, but it's like, and if, if you're like, hey, I want to do 10 minutes of yoga every day this week, mm-hmm. or like, God, three times a week, make something yeah. that you can win and set that accountability for yourself. Mm-hmm. Joe, yeah. yeah, what like what's something that's helped you inside of like your day to day scheduling? Um, so I actually have mine right here. I'm in my like little home office, but so I separate my life basically into like where's the camera? There it is. Yeah, like, nice. So I have um, work stuff, home, and the stuff for me. And I was doing it like a week at a time and then kind of putting things into my calendar based on like what I had going on. But like everything feels really up in the air right now for sure. And like it's a hard time. So um, yeah, I've been doing it by like just like four day chunks now. So um, then it's smaller and then I like get more done and then I can see like where it's more balanced so like for this one like last week like where's the okay this is hard <laughs> last week I did whatever there's three <laughs> chunks here though <laughs> and last week the stuff that I did at home was just like I did so much stuff at home so this week that chunk I like made myself make it smaller and I didn't do very much stuff for like active things for me last week. I just did like a lot of like crafting stuff, which is great too. Um, but this week I made um, it like where my things are walking, yoga, and then working on photography stuff. Cause that's Ooh. like a new skill that I really want to like go into more during this time. And then my work stuff is just like the work stuff that I have to do. That's due this week that I am doing. So yeah, I try to make sure like each thing is like, pretty balanced otherwise it's really easy for me just to like get stuck in the things that I like just have to do instead of things that I want to yeah. do so, yeah so yeah that's I what love I've been that. oh my gosh and that and that's that's so key just again like just having it written out and and Jill do you do this mm-hmm. the night before do you do this on Sundays how do you plan this out for yourself um I was doing it every Monday and then my husband and I normal life <laughs> we like sit down on sunday nights and go through our weeks together and that um just kind of helps us know what's going on um but for with doing it with the four day chunks i'll probably do this again on friday i'm guessing yeah thursday or friday but yeah just basically like at the start of whatever my productivity cycle is or whatever <laughs> but yeah I love that. I actually, I will so take a page from that book there is like having it because we have to pivot, right? We don't know again, like what the next week is going to look like. So just what we can do is have really control over our own day and our own mind. Like we just discussed, but like, I love what you did. There. You're just in smaller chunks. This is what mm-hmm. is, you know, I have to do, but then the creative project scheduling that in, you know, and having mm-hmm. that as a, task in the day really it's just like go in and dive into that and how mm-hmm. do you for example photography how have you found yourself um juggling time with your son and then also working and also having your husband what are some <laughs> tools and and things that have really helped you kind of find you time um so before this all happened I have a friend who's in the group so Sheila if you're watching hi um she's an amazing photographer and she we went for a walk together with my son and we just um like she taught me some basic things to get going and stuff and so um now I just like today I went for had some time this afternoon so I just went for a long walk and took pictures and just tried to like practice what she was talking about and then um so that was really good but then when I don't have time to do it like personally I'll try and do photography centered around like my husband's business or around just like home life or anything that like I post on like mom squad I'm trying to like use my good camera instead of my phone (laughs) so that I like get like those little bits of practice in so it doesn't have to be like a long drawn out walk like Mm -hmm. today was just like keeping my camera accessible and like 
using it more, like reaching for it more kind of helps. But yeah, even if it's like a minute a day, it's it's good. That's the thing too. I, I love that you bring that up. It's like, even if it is a minute, like literally if it is a minute, if it is a given time, it, it's doing something that fills up our cup as well, right? Because we're mm-hmm. busy, like mom or not, we're busy tending to other people. That's what we're, we're so good at as women. And also mm-hmm. doing that thing that fills up your cup. So mm-hmm. uh, speaking of filling up the cup, I wanted to go over, there's so many things we could talk about and I, we really wanted to keep it to a 20 minute mark, but you're actually <laughs> very like, I don't know how, how did that go so fast? Um, a thing too is, is really, t- I want to talk very quickly about blood sugar balance. Mm. So mood, um, and, and it's really nice. Actually, I see one of my teachers even was a, um, a nutritionist as well as a psychologist. And I think that really um, practices are coming together. But mood blood and blood sugar are very intimately tied. We've all heard of the phrase hangry. And I'm sure you've experienced it. I definitely have. And so the yep. key. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I don't know what that thing is. Like, I don't know what people mean about hangry. Um, and so for yourself to thrive and this is for your kids too you want to be having i know the whole fasting thing has been a big trend for people and there are some studies that show there are benefits absolutely but for the common person especially women especially with kids and like running around you want to have a good hearty breakfast i mean like a few eggs possibly having whether you have like oatmeal or toast with avocado, um, something fermented, like I love kimchi, uh, it could be sauerkraut. So just make sure you get it from the um, refrigerator section of the health food store instead of the one at the grocery store aisle because that's actually been pasteurized and there's no probiotics in that anymore. Mm-hmm. But um, having something that's substantial and just like, I don't want you to judge yourself at this point of like, eating too much or eating too little of this, just like have something that satisfies you and Mm -hmm. that will be able to carry you through the rest of the day or not day, but like really the rest of the morning and have your mind focused and you're ready for lunch and like having, let's say like chicken with quinoa and steamed cruciferous vegetables, like cauliflower, um, um, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, and have like a little bit of soy sauce or something like that with it, whatever, like it could be whatever, but making mm-hmm. sure you schedule that and not, you're not like s- picking the bits off of like the leftovers, you know, and you can yeah. make for everyone else. You know what I mean? Just like kind of, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I'm sure you've done this like as a mother too, like, oh, God, I've done that. <laughs> yeah, like you're just like, okay, everyone's good. Now mom has like a few things from the tray, whatever, right? Like, you know what? Yeah. So really like having the the time for yourself, I know it's so much easier said than done, but really like this is about making life work and this is quarantine and beyond, right? Because we're not in this situation permanently. But if we were for the next like month, even like let's make it a good, decent time for ourselves. And anyway, so balancing blood sugar, because when you are not in that state, you are not able to be of full service. And then that way, like our reaction time is very small between like, you know, like stimulus and reaction versus stimulus space responding. And that has Mm -hmm. to do with food as well and being well nourished. Um, And then the other thing is, is healthy fats. I think everyone is kind of more aware that fats are not bad for us, but really like our brain is made of 60% fat. So you want to have walnuts and avocados and eggs and coconut oil, um, things like that. Don't shy away from it. And I do understand um, if you're watching weight, it is it's still, I think that's the last, the last thing that people need to focus on when if you're like still wanting to lose weight and still wanting to eat well, it's like, Focus on these whole beautiful foods and you won't want to, like your body will just be satisfied. It's a funny feeling. And it's, and it's, I thought I had eaten healthy my whole life. And once I start to really eat to my body's needs, I'm like, oh, okay. Like I actually need to eat more fat to feel better. For example, uh, yeah. we're just coming up on the top of the hour. Jill, are you wanting to, to finish things? Do you want to do part two? Um, we can just finish it and then we can do like maybe questions and stuff. And then if oh. we think of other things we forgot, we can do that next 
Okay, I love it. I love it. Okay. Um, so, and the other thing is here, actually, Jill, before I move on, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Like, what do you think is the biggest struggle as a mom to really nourish yourself? Um, I think just like time is the biggest thing. Like I find um, I do a lot of like meal prepping, but if I, if I don't do that, then I just think like, oh, I don't have time. Like, to like cook like a nice meal for myself or like put together something healthy or like anything like that. But then it's like, you just feel like garbage if you don't. And then, um, yeah, like I just find it's hard to like function the rest of the day. And then by the end of the day, I just feel beat. So um, I did whole 30 in January and it just like really opened my eyes to like, wow, I eat a lot of sugar and I eat like, a lot of just like filler foods so um yeah i felt like i was like in like detox like withdrawal mode for like a week it was just like oh my gosh like i can't now um but what i took away from that was um like eating a lot of like i eat a lot of eggs now in the morning and that's like a huge help and then like avocado um lots of oils like stuff that is like healthy fats that like totally. do stick with you and I find like my like I used to like just get like kind of moody in the afternoon and like my mm-hmm. husband will say like really moody. but like I don't have that when I like eat like healthy like totally. satisfying breakfast in the morning so it makes a big difference for sure it's so true I and mean, it's like the meal prep thing is is like spot on really um like even if it's literally like cut up vegetables or just like a thing of quinoa, whatever it is, it really, really does help. Yeah, um, sure. and, and, and absolutely about mood. I think that is the huge, huge thing that people don't realize. They're like, why do I feel sleepy or moody or anxious or whatever? And it's like, no, because you actually haven't eaten in a way to fuel your body as well. Yeah, for sure. So the next thing I want to talk about is movement. So one thing I find fascinating is that um, there's an enzyme in the body called mTOR, and that's activated for um, three different things. Actually, there's a few different things, but when the body is uh, exercising for more than 30 minutes, and it does not have to be a specific exercise. It doesn't have to be running or weightlifting. It can be dancing. It could be, like, going for a walk. And this mTOR actually um it activates cellular autophagy so meaning cellular cleansing fasting also does the same thing um so does like just any sort of like extra pressure on the body um like weight for example but this is something so easy you can go for a half hour walk and your body starts to cleanse itself Hmm. it is very beautiful only after 30 minutes so um you don't have to be doing hit workouts and especially if you have hormone imbalance or you just don't like it like I am, I did not exercise for most of my life. Like really only in the past, I think like three or four years to be honest. And like, okay. I did not grow up exercising. I would skip gym class. Um, <laughs> now I'm running races and obstacle course races and stuff just because I, I found my groove. But I thought that I had to be a certain way and do a certain thing. And, and, mm-hmm. and it started off with me walking every day. Like that's how I started running half marathons, just walking. Yeah. you know and, and so awesome. i think yeah just taking the pressure off and that's something we can have the kids for or just like going for a solo walk doing your photography mm-hmm. listening to a podcast like i think again just feeding the mind and on audiobooks and things like that is mm-hmm. it's crucial um i found a lot of pressure on myself as of like since the gym is is out of the question lately is um like just exercising you know cuz i'm sitting down and uh yeah, like I, I, I make myself exercise, but in the last mm-hmm. week I did not really do a whole lot other than walking. And mm-hmm. I felt a lot of pressure on myself. Mm-hmm. What are you, how do you, how do you find time for yourself and what's your relationship to that? Um, so I'm, exercise is something that like has been a, a challenge my whole life. Like I also struggled with an eating disorder and a lot of it was over exercise for me. So mm-hmm. I would like, like stay up all night just anxious about like the food I had eaten that day. And then I'd 
wait until it wasn't like pitch black outside and then I would go running or like go biking mm. and like before my parents would wake up sort of thing. So, mm. and then I would work out during the day too and just like, yeah, I was just too, too active. It wasn't like a healthy motivation. So um, for me, I'm always like just checking, like, and I'm not saying this is the right way to do it, but it's like just where I'm at in my journey with it right now. Um, like I love exercise and I love being active and I like, I just value it so much in my life. So I always try to check like, what's my motivation behind yeah. this exercise and like, am I doing it because I know that I'm going to feel great and I'm going to enjoy it and it's good for me. Or am I doing it because I feel like I'm gaining weight or I feel like I'm not like, totally. No, so it's yeah. yeah. And if I feel like that, I like make myself not do it, and I like I'm trying to make myself like sit through that emotion and be like, where is this coming from? And I'm not good at it. Like, <laughs> like it's like it's a huge challenge, but it's just something that I'm working on and um, trying to surround myself with people who have like a healthy relationship with exercise mm. to kind of learn from them. And yeah, so that's kind of just where I'm at with it. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. And I can completely relate. I'm just going to turn on the light here. Um, actually, it's a little too bright. Oh, my goodness. All right. <laughs> That's a weird time of day when it's like. It is, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I was going to say, so I, I love that you bring that up because it's so true. I have had still moments and I still have to check in with myself, like especially mm -hmm. the past few weeks where it's like gym is like, I do it whether I feel like it or not. And it's just like yeah. my version of my therapy. And then I, and then you're right. Like I've been like, is, am I exercising because I feel like I need to, because I haven't been good or something or I overate mm -hmm. this or whatever. Right. And so I, and I have the perspective now of, again, that switch that we we're talking about is, is I feel so good. I feel so energized that I can't not exercise or I love the way it makes me feel. And it's nothing intense. Like a lot of the time I'll put on at home, like some sort of strengthening yoga and that just feels mm -hmm. good. Everybody feels good after nourishing exercise. Yeah, so absolutely really the key here is finding something that works for you, whether it's being outside or whether it's yoga, Pilates, um, and just like having the grace for ourselves to also realize that we have lower energy, you know, right now, I think just because our minds are a little bit more full, having the grace to, you know, do something that feels nourishing and yeah. you it from that place as well. So mm -hmm. Um, that's the, you know, I have, I have sleep on here as well. I'm not going to go too much into it because we are getting to the half hour mark somehow, Jill. <laughs> don't know how that's happening. Um, <laughs> but you know, I think sleep is a huge thing. It comes back to our mood. It comes to weight as well because it actually affects our hormone levels. It increases cortisol, mm -hmm. which then around two or three o'clock, we're going to want to reach for something sweet. Um, and then, uh, that will increase our insulin levels. It actually um, messes with our ghrelin and leptin, leptin levels as well. So making us hungrier throughout the day and wanting to eat more. And then we mm -hmm. want to have more refined carbohydrates with that very quick boost. Um, yeah. So I used to actually have insomnia when I was 16 years old. I was diagnosed sleeping pills. And I remember I was not asked are you exercising? Are you spending time with the right people? Are you eating well? It was just like, boom, here you go. And so yeah. I have to learn how to sleep. And I've had, I've had a, like a little bit of a struggle in the past few days with sleep and I've actually by using these tips have helped. So, um, big thing for me is journaling, like really just like spending your time by yourself and just free flow. And even if you don't feel like writing, it's just like, I don't feel like writing and then blah, blah, blah. Like you just have, I do a brain dump. I literally title yeah. the page brain dump and I just <laughs> blow out my thoughts and it is yeah. so helpful. And I plan the day ahead the next day. I do this on Sundays and I also do this the day before cause I'm kind of a freak like that, but <laughs> Like I like to have, what's that? Just love planning. I do. I do. And I just, I, I like to just kind of know, I like, as I have my meetings, I have things and I'm always learning something new. And my boyfriend's always like, you need to relax. Like you need to wind down, like 
watch yeah. Sex in the City. Like he knows I love that show. So that's great. <laughs> um, so that's that's one thing is journaling. Um, I love like something like chamomile tea, um, mm-hmm. cabbage tincture, um, shutting off my screens as early as I can. Um, having a dark, cool room. Um, dark, mm-hmm. even like your skin actually has uh, receptors for light. And so mm-hmm. the darker the room is, um, the lot, a lot better. And I always put my phone on airplane mode. I know that's not available for everyone, but um, mm-hmm. really just whatever you can, like really being resourceful, what are the things that we can do? Um, sometimes mm-hmm. guided meditations help others, um, yin yoga, things like that. Um, mm-hmm. You really, you would be someone great to ask, you know, I'm sure your son is now on a better sleep schedule, but maybe six <laughs> months ago or when he was probably six months old or something, right? It was a lot harder. What would you yeah. say to a new mom right now? Um, sleep is also something I've struggled with a lot. I would say the biggest thing with like just sleep with a baby is like don't guilt yourself and don't stress like because if you're stressed you're not gonna sleep and it's Mm -hmm. it's hard and like I don't know it's it's just a hard time like I remember being so tired that I was like seeing bugs crawl across the wall that were not there yeah no it's a real thing it's like there's like the border between so out of it so yeah I think there's sorry there's like a bit of a leg just now (laughs) it was insane like it okay (laughs) it's all good yeah it was it was a crazy time though i'm like oh man but yeah i would just say like don't guilt yourself and like don't compare yourself to Mm -hmm. other moms and their schedule and stuff and just ask for help when you need it like i remember going to my mom's house a lot and just being like can you please like get up with him in the morning or like if he gets up in the night and stuff and like like she would just say like it's one night for me like that's it's not gonna kill me sort of thing so um and ask your partner for help too like you, mm-hmm. their kid too you know <laughs> like they can totally. help a lot. so yeah like ben was amazing like he he did most of our sleep training because i just couldn't do it like i like just felt like so guilty about it which i know now like i didn't need to feel guilty about but mm-hmm. yeah he was a rock star through it all for sure I love to hear that. Uh, I I actually have a feeling that Eric is going to (laughs) be the sleep trainer too, like in that way. And yeah, like ask your partner, ask, ask for help. And, Mm -hmm. um, and like your community is so amazing for that. And really that was the last point that I wanted to share is, is reaching out. And Mm -hmm. so Jill, I'd love to hear really your thoughts about community and like how people can reach out to you and, and, Mm -hmm um really like what you would love to see for your community as well yeah so my hope is that um just this group and these talks makes you feel like you're not alone and makes you um just feel motivated in a good way not like guilted into anything but just motivated Mm -hmm. to do the things that might be a little bit hard or might feel a bit awkward or challenging at first but the things that like you need to do to feel good and to come out of this time um, feeling like a better person and a stronger Mm. person. So yeah, people can connect probably Instagram is the best way for me or in this group. Um, Instagram is mom squad YYC and yeah, I love connecting. So don't, don't be shy. Like I, I check my Instagram all the time because there's always messages and it always makes me happy. So (laughs) you're so approachable it's so nice like I I, it's it's so true like you really you walk your talk with community every interaction I've had with you has been so positive and and um yeah we'll link to your Instagram channel and um if you want more support around nutrition and really understanding your body a little bit better and and you know maybe we'll even have a talk about like body image we're talking about this and and really going into that because there's one aspect of like the positive body movement which i love and i am all for because i'm like a, you know have my own version of my curves as well and then mm-hmm. also looking at like okay what makes us feel proud in our body like what mm-hmm. how do we actually feel great 
Um, and just kind of like combining the two. And that's where I yeah. found my very sweet spot. And I, again, want women to feel that way as well. So that's you can great. find me on Luscious Living or SlameBilgan.com. And yeah, thank you so much for joining us, you guys. If you're live or on the replay, we appreciate you. And see you next time. Yeah, thank you. Bye. See ya.